I'm sitting down to record and I open up the curtains and <laughs> it's just this beautiful, misty, foggy, Pacific Northwest kind of morning. <laughs> and I wanted to share that with you. It's just so beautiful. There goes a bus. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to the DeHart House. My name is Alicia, your host of this crafty video podcast here on YouTube. Welcome if you're a new viewer and welcome back if you're a returning viewer. Um, this episode is all about the things that I've made in September. There's actually quite a lot to get through. <laughs> So we're going to start with uh, some finished objects and some works in progress. I also have some spinning, fiber prep related content, um, so let's get into it. <laughs> so first of all, let me tell you what I'm wearing. I got a few things on. Uh, first of all uh, is this sweater. This is a sweater I knit. I don't know how long ago. A year, two years ago? It's not that old. Um, but this is the uh, Radiate pattern by Hohi Locatelli. I did knit this out of 100% acrylic yarn. Uh, so it does have a little bit of uh, pilling kind of stuff going on, but I can throw it in the washing machine and not worry about it. So, I like it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's October 1st that I'm recording this, so I wanted to wear orange in light of the, the new month. Pumpkins, Halloween, all the fall stuff. So, um, yeah, it has a nice circular yoke with this very colorful detail coming down, and then it just is solid gray the rest of the way down. And yep I love this sweater <laughs> um, the other thing I'm wearing that you can very obviously see are some earrings my sister made these for me uh, she sent them as part of my birthday gift so in September uh, is my birthday so <laughs> I'm a year older uh, but yes they are uh, sewn she sews these they're very lightweight earrings which I appreciate uh, and it's got embroidery on here of yarn in the shape of a heart with a crochet hook through it. And I have another pair right here. So my sister has a shop <laughs> and I will link that down below in the description box. It is so useful by Samantha and she makes all kinds of great things. Earrings, scrunchies, cute little headbands. Uh, purses, bags, um, and she does custom orders all the time, so lots of good stuff. <laughs> uh, I'm also wearing a pair of socks, <laughs> and I don't know if I can get my feet up here. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> All awkward. Um, I'm wearing my scaffolding socks and I'll put in a picture here because it's just too hard to show you my feet. Um, this is a pattern uh, that I designed so it's one of my patterns, DeHart House Designs. Um, scaffolding socks, it has some lace detail that goes up um, one side of each sock and you switch it so the lace pattern uh, can either face the outsides of your feet or on um, the insides depending on how you wear them so uh, yeah that's what I'm wearing I've got as much knitting on as possible without being too warm because uh, while it is getting cooler here it's not winter yet so <laughs> anyway I also have new glasses <laughs> I uh, got new glasses uh, this year, so kind of updated my style a bit. Those other glasses were nine years, ten, uh, 
seven years old. I think seven years old. They were getting a little uh, worse for wear. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I updated. I really wanted glasses without nose pads. Um, just because wearing those glasses all day long, by the end of the day, it just kind of hurt having all that weight condensed onto those two little nose pads. So I got a style where it could distribute the weight a little bit better. So um, it's more comfortable, which is nice. Yeah, so new glasses, yeah. Uh, one more uh, birthday gift I want to share with you guys. Um, so my sister sent me a bunch of things, which also included uh, this crown, and I'll have to see when editing if the text is facing the right way. Um, but yeah, it says Yarn Queen, and so uh, yeah, it's funny to hear my niece and nephew call me the Yarn Queen. So. Hey y'all, I forgot to mention there's going to be a giveaway at the end of this episode. I'm going to announce the giveaway, so stay tuned all the way till the end. Thanks! So, finished objects. Uh, these are not going to show up in chronological order. Uh, I'm just going to do it by order of convenience of grabbing them off the pile. <laughs> Uh, but if you would like to keep up with things that I'm working on, things that I finish, uh, go give me a follow over on Instagram, Dheart House on Instagram. Again, that information will be typed out for you down below in the description box. Uh, but I try to make at least one post every day. Every now and again, I skip a day just because I'm living my life. You know, going to baseball games and actually going to school again, and it's super fun. Uh, but every now and then I skip a day just to give myself a break, so. Alright, so the first finished object I'm going to share with you is a pattern by Imagined Landscapes, uh, who is highly known for gnome patterns. So uh, this was a mystery knit along during Advent last year, December 2020. And so this is the, oh, I'll put the name of the pattern on the screen because I can't directly remember, but I knit this pattern through Advent along with the clues. It was a total mystery last year. And um, I've made another one now using the full pattern. So I have another gnome <laughs> here. So I used um, just uh, leftover yarn from other projects. So this gray is uh, leftover from my So Faded sweater. Uh, so is the black for the belt here. The blue is um, leftover from socks. I've made and the blue green variegate in here is also left over from socks. Uh, so <laughs> yes, it's adorable. So this is going to be a Christmas present for uh, a family member uh, this year. So I need to make probably a couple more of these. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's so cute. So. Yeah, I love the feet, and it's hard for me to get the legs to point the right way, but look at that. <laughs> the shoe is a so cute. Oops. Yeah, so he's got a few um, beans inside. I don't know if you can hear that. Uh, just to give him a little bit of weight on the bottom, but mostly he's stuffed with uh, polyfill. So, yep, adorable. So that's my first finished object to share with you. Now I need a place to put these when I'm done showing you. The next finished object I want to share with you is a blanket. And this is a pattern of mine. It's called My Favorite Baby Blanket. And it is a free pattern available on Ravelry. 
So I also made a tutorial video to go along with the pattern and this is the blanket in the tutorial video. So <laughs> yeah, it is finished. Um, the pattern is in the style of uh, grandmother's favorite dishcloth or grandma's favorite dishcloth or washcloth, some version of, of those words. Um, so it is knit uh, corner to corner. Let's see if I can get this. Aha, okay. <laughs> so it is knit corner to corner uh, diagonally. And what I did was I used two skeins of self-striping yarn and I striped those yarns. So I would knit two rows in one color, switch two rows in the other color, and then just repeat that. So it is garter stitch, so uh, it's really stretchy. I knit mine to be uh, three feet by three feet. It used all of one skein of yarn, so I think that skein was a little bit lighter than the others I've used. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I used Lion Brand Mandala yarn, and the two colorways were Cupid and Valkyrie. And I just love it. It's so bright and beautiful. Uh, really easy blanket very little to remember from the pattern because there's no lace or any kind of uh, design stitch, it's just garter stitch. So uh, the only thing you really have to pay attention to is making sure you don't run out of yarn so that you'll be able to finish that last corner. So yeah, like I said, free pattern on Ravelry with a tutorial video to go along with it if videos are your thing. That is it for knitting, um, at least for finished knitting. So I know I'm lying. My other FO is hanging up on the wall. One sec. I totally forgot about these socks. <laughs> I've had them hanging up on the wall. I like to put finished socks on the blockers and hang them up on the wall like art. And I just forgot that they were there. So. <laughs> Um, but yes, I finished these socks and the lighting is working perfectly with highlighting this lace detail. So uh, yeah, this is a design of mine. This pattern will be released this month during October. Uh, I know it's confusing because the video is entitled September Makes, but it's now October. So October 2021, this pattern will go up on Ravelry. So uh, it has this little bit of lace detail here uh, running down both sides of the sock. Oops. And I did use uh, black because uh, my skin tone is very light and so it'll have that really uh, big contrast there and hopefully uh, the lace detail will be seen while I'm wearing the socks. So depending on your skin tone, you may want to uh, maybe use a lighter shade of yarn to get that contrast. So uh, that's why I chose black. Uh, unfortunately, black is really hard to photograph and show on video, but I'm gonna do my best. So it does have uh, ribbing on the front of the sock, so it's going to make for a really nice snug fit uh, with these socks. So yeah, and I like some of my socks to have a shorter uh, leg on them, so I just knit them shorter because I wanted to, but you could easily uh, knit the leg much longer. So yeah, these are finished. I used uh, the black yarn is uh, Premier Yarns Serenity Sock in black. The green is also Premier Yarns Serenity Sock in 
what do they call their green color? Olive? No, woodsy green. That's what it's called. And then the tan color here is leftover from a shawl. I think it's um, Malabrigo. Yeah, it's Malabrigo. Uh, I forget the colorway name. <sighs> Too many names rolling around in my head. <laughs> But yeah, just uh, leftovers from other projects. I didn't have enough of the tan to also do the heel. I didn't have enough of the green to also do the cuff and toe. So I mixed them. And I think it looks pretty nice. So these are finished and the pattern will go up this month. Okay, so three knitted finished objects. That's not terrible. So this month, I've spent a lot of time on fiber prep and spinning. So <laughs> the first thing I want to show you is some spinning I did early in the month. Um, I had this fiber. Where did the bag go? Let me get it. I bought this fiber from uh, Beezy B fibers and the colorway is Sleeping Beauty and I bought this was it was it last year is it when I was in Texas it might have been when I was in Texas I don't know <laughs> but it's been in my stash for at least a year <laughs> so I went to my stash and said I really want to spin up something so I spun up uh, all four ounces this was uh, combed top combed top right yes and so I spun the whole thing up uh, it's in two skeins because the bobbins on my spinning wheel can only handle two ounces really of fiber so uh, I can't do all four ounces on one bobbin unless I buy the jumbo flyer bobbin for my Ashford spinning wheel, which I just don't feel the need to do right now. So it's split in two skeins, but it works out because I would like to make socks out of this. So it's already split in half for me for, for the two socks. So this is a blend. We've got 70% merino, 15% bamboo, and 15% mulberry silk. So it is, I think, going to work out nicely for socks. Yeah. Um, this is a two-ply. I did just a, a traditional two-ply where I spun two bobbins, both in the same direction and then plied them in the opposite direction. Um, it came out closer to a sport weight than a fingering weight, I think overall on average, which is kind of a bummer considering I spun up a sample and knit a tiny little swatch out of it and it seemed to be fingering weight. Let me get that swatch. So I just spun the tiniest amount. Where's my there it is. Come on. It wants to focus on my face. Whatever. <laughs> you can see it's the tiniest little swatch. Um, but yeah, it came out to like a really nice gauge for fingering weight for socks on a US size one needle. Uh, and then I don't know what happened here, <laughs> but that's okay. So I still would like to make socks out of this. So I have uh, 124 yards over here and 
149 yards over here. So we'll see. But it's beautiful. It's got this uh, teal blue uh, as like the main color. And then there's a uh, brown and pink and yellow and it's just really rich with color and I, I think it's beautiful. <laughs> so I'm excited to make socks out of this. I really wanted to cast on the socks right away but I wanted to show you the finished yarn first so now that I've shown you I can cast on. <laughs> I also finished another spin off my drop spindle. So I spun up some more of this green fiber. This is uh, merino, 100% merino. This is a two ply. I think this one's closer to a fingering than the uh, Sleeping Beauty, the one I just showed you. Uh, but this is 24 grams and 112 yards overall. This is a, uh, oh yes, see, I'm, glad I'm writing notes now. Uh, this is a two ply. What I did is I spun the singles, all 24 grams, on the spindle and then I plied it from the outside of the turtle with the inside of the turtle together. So that's what I have here. And I love it. It's beautiful. And I got kind of bored with the solid green, so I have not put more of this on my spindle. Uh, I feel like I need a little bit of a break from the solid color, so the Sleeping Beauty was really fun. Plus, I've been doing a bunch of fiber prep. So, let me get the stack of fiber. All right, so this is some fiber that I bought last year from a local lady, and this is Carrie Hill. So I bought two bags from her, and they've just been sitting around waiting to be processed. Um, I bought them, what, last year around August, and then we moved into this house in late October so I really just didn't have time to deal with it and we were doing online school and the whole moving and unpacking thing and setting up house anyway so <laughs> um, I figured out which bag was which because I, I bought two breeds uh, from her and this is the Carrie Hill so I have been washing and combing up this fiber and it's so fluffy. I love it. Um, is this? The staple length is just ridiculously long. Um, <laughs> nope. <laughs> it's like five or six inches, uh, the staple length. So there's a lot to work with here. But uh, yeah, so I've been combing this up with my handmade combs that my husband made for me. Love them. And I've started dyeing some of it. So I went all out with the fall colors. I've got gray, I've got yellow, I've got a golden yellow orangey color. I even did a little bit of mixing to get more of a rust uh, brown. Yeah loving it. So I went with uh, really uh, standout autumnal colors for uh, the first go round. So I also, <laughs> I have a lot of acquisitions this month. Um, so I have been wanting a blending board for a while and finally did it. So <laughs> My husband is the best because he's helped create so many tools for me to do all of these crafts and I just love it. So not only did he help uh, make me combs, 
but he also helped me put together this blending board. So what I did is I bought the carding cloth and what he did is he put this board together for me. <laughs> so um, yeah, so it's a nice, thick, sturdy board um, with the carding cloth. And I have a uh, paintbrush I'm using to uh, push the fibers down into the cloth. And I rolled off some Rolex, and I'm still getting used to the terminology. I think they were more like poonies because they were very tightly rolled, those Rolex. And I spun it. <laughs> so I did a little sample. So got the Rolex off, spun it, and knit it up so that I could see what it looked like. And so got this thing. Oh, I plied it chain ply, right? So chain ply will get you more of this striping behavior. Uh, but I just wanted to do a real quick sample, um, spun all the fiber onto one bobbin, and then did the chain ply, um, plying it back on itself, and I uh, washed it. <laughs> dried it, did all the thwacking and stuff, and then uh, knit it up. So I think it's pretty nice, uh, this fiber. It uh, I've got some twisted rib going on here, and uh, I've come to the conclusion that twisted rib with hand spun yarn doesn't look as nice as twisted rib with <laughs> commercial yarn. So <laughs> probably not going to do that again. Um, this is a regular rib, not twisted, uh, and then down here is twisted. It just kind of looks messier, in my opinion. Um, but anyway, so I was hoping I had enough here for a hat, but no. So I have a headband, if anything, uh, and this was... A woolen prep and I did woolen spun as well so it's uh, gonna hold that warm air in there it kind of matches my sweater that I'm wearing <laughs> but yeah all in all I'm really happy with the fiber it doesn't bother me um, I have sens sensitive skin and I'm allergic to quite a lot of things and I, I think it feels delightful, so I'd be happy to make a hat, a scarf, a sweater uh, out of this fiber. So I'm really happy with it. So I still have more of this autumnal dyed fiber. So in addition to this, I prepped up some more, but I watched some more videos about how to roll off of a blending board because I really had a hard time with that first go. So I think I did a better job this time. So I have, this is just in a, a plastic gallon size bag um, here, uh, but I have these. So that first go off the blending board, I got just two big fat rolled eggs and they were tightly wound. Um, this time I put less fiber onto the board and really tried to like get it to blend more together. So it wasn't just lifting it off the board and rolling it up. It was actually stretching it through the carding cloth, getting them to blend a little bit more. So if I take one of these out, so you don't have that sheen off the plastic. Um, it looks much more blended than before. So before it was very clearly like brown stripe, yellow stripe, orange stripe, <laughs> and now they're a little more blended, which is what I wanted. So this is super fun. They are still pretty tightly wound in here. But I did find that if I spin them in the opposite direction as how they're rolled, it's so much easier to draft the fiber, which is cool. 
So, so yeah, I've got some little Rolex or Poonies or whatever you want to call them here. And then I've got some more here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm pretty excited. So, uh, these two bags together is about 50 grams. So I'm going to spin this up and uh, compare it to my previous spin. Um, just to get an idea of the spinning process. So because I rolled these differently off the blending board versus the first go round, um, I'm hoping that the spinning experience has been improved. So I would like these to spin more easily than my first go around. So that's what I'm going to be trying out and mostly looking for. Because um, the colors are going to be different and how you apply the yarn is, is going to affect that as well. So I'm mostly looking for does it spin well um, in the way of taking it off the board. So that's what I want to try. And I'm really excited about it. I have so much of this Carrie Hill fiber. Um, plus I have uh, other bags of fiber to go through. So I have no shortage of fiber to play around with this, which is super exciting. So I have one more finished object to share with you and then acquisitions, other things I've acquired other than my earrings and my blending board. <laughs> Um, and that finished object is a sewing project. Um, I've actually made a couple of these, but uh, they're in use. The other one's in use. So um, this is a reusable grocery bag. So uh, I found the pattern on YouTube and I'll put a link to that video in the description box below. Um, but it's in the same shape <laughs> as plastic shopping bags. So it has these two handles and it opens up and all that great stuff. So I made one bag out of cotton flannel. This one is like a cotton um, canvas type of fabric. And then I'd like to make one more out of quilter's cotton and just kind of compare the three. Uh, but here in Washington State, today's the first day of the single-use plastic bag ban. So no more free single-use plastic bags at the grocery store. So you either bring your own bag or uh, you can buy bags at the store. So if it's a paper bag, you're going to pay for it. If it's a plastic bag that's compostable, you're going to pay for it. Or you bring your own and you don't pay for bags. So <laughs> I have piles and piles of fabric. So I was like, let me jump on that and make us a few more bags. We already have a bunch of reusable shopping bags, but the downside is um, most of them are made out of recycled plastic and quite a few of them uh, cannot go in the washing machine. So, you know, some of them do have stains on them from like a package of chicken leaking and things like that. So we were hoping for some bags that we could just throw in the washing machine uh, should they get dirty, which we know they will, <laughs> and just make it a little bit easier on, on ourselves. So. Um, yeah, because <laughs> I won't be able to tell the cashier, can you put the chicken in the plastic bag <laughs> anymore? <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I made a couple of these. I also sewed up a couple of masks. I don't have them with me here to show you. Um, but uh, yeah, I have to wear a mask at work, uh, which I'll talk about towards the end of the episode. So I whipped up uh, a couple more of those. So we'd have a few more masks to cycle through. Uh, but yeah, so I've done a little bit of sewing, which I've been wanting to do. So mission accomplished on the sewing front. 
So acquisitions, I have quite a few. So there's the blending board I shared with you earlier, right here. So um, I will make sure to have a link in the description box of where I bought the carding cloth, should you be interested. Um, and then I also purchased, <laughs> oops, something off of Etsy that requires assembly. So I will be enlisting the help of my husband again. So I have been watching uh, Jillian Eve here on YouTube. I'll put a link to her channel uh, down below in the description box. And she talked about some charca spinning wheels to spin cotton. And wow, was I inspired. So I bought the same 3D printed Charka spinning wheel with all its many parts and things and rubber bands and stuff. It's all here in this bag. Um, and so this, I'm trying to get this other part, hang on. doesn't matter <laughs> anyway <laughs> all right so basically um this uh i'll put a link to the etsy shop of where i purchased this it uh these are all 3d printed parts uh and so you need to assemble this spinning wheel yourself um and so what I'd like to do is not just attach it to a board, but try to mimic the book style of a charka spinning wheel uh, and just go all out on that. And I think uh, my husband's on board, so <laughs> uh, he's going to help me with that. I don't have any cotton to spin yet. It'll come probably in time for you know when this is finished being assembled but um yeah i'm pretty excited this was super affordable less than 50 dollars for these 3d printed parts and uh it's got three bobbins uh, i've got two in my hand but there's three total these are the bobbins um that come with it and it comes with rubber bands for the drive bands. You go from the large wheel to the middle wheel to the um, smallest wheel. Perhaps this one. I need to watch the video again. Um, but uh, I'm pretty excited. <laughs> so. Uh, if you don't know what a charka spinning wheel is, there are lots of, um, like I said, I'm going to link uh, Jillian Eve's uh, video down below that I watched. Give it a watch. It's super informative. She has a lot of videos about history of uh, spinning tools and spinning techniques, and it's really fascinating. So, um, yeah, so I bought the same. 3D printed Charka spinning wheel setup that she purchased in one of those videos and I'm excited to figure out how to put this thing together and then use it. So there's that. <laughs> I bought a spinning wheel and it came in a bag, like a little bag, <laughs> in the mail. <laughs> and then around my birthday, we went and got me some more fiber to prep. <laughs> Two bags full. Uh, yeah, so a, another local lady uh, posted some Jacob wool for sale. And I bought two very large bursting bags full. So we have a nice blend of colors here and over here yeah 
So this has not been um, washed yet. It's lightly skirted and I need to go through and do washing. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to be working with some Jacob Wool and I'm really excited because it comes in many colors uh, because the sheep tend to be spotted and uh, I'll do a whole thing, I imagine, about uh, this wool and Jacob sheep. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, so I have two more bags. So I have two bags of Jacob. I have one bag of Carrie Hill that I'm currently washing. I have some Rambouillet. I have, what's the other one? There's one more. There's one more, I can't remember. So I've got Carrie Hill, one I can't remember, Rambouillet, and two bags of Jacob. So I have five big bursting bags of wool. And I love it. <laughs> yeah, pretty awesome. So that wraps up acquisitions. The only thing I didn't share with you yet are works in progress, because there are some things that I didn't quite finish this month. And one of them is so close. I really wanted to count it in September, but I'll just have to wait till next month. Hold the phone, I forgot one acquisition. <laughs> it's a little thing. Uh, a skein of yarn. <laughs> so uh, I actually found this at my local Walmart. Uh, it's Lion Brand. I am not sponsored by Lion Brand, by the way. I just keep finding lots of yarn of theirs that I really enjoy. Uh, it's called Summer Nights. It is, weird. okay, 82% acrylic. 18% polyester and it's a fingering weight. This color is called Treasure Island but it was super affordable uh, at Walmart and I'm gonna knit socks out of it. It's sparkly. Yeah it's just I'd never seen this before and I'm always on the lookout for new yarns that I can use and this was new to me so I'm going to try it out and we'll see how it turns out. I have not knit socks out of uh, acrylic before. I've only ever used um, a wool, primarily wool blend yarn. So this one is primarily acrylic. So I'm really curious how that's going to work out, how it's going to feel, how it's going to uh, hold up after multiple uses and washes. So we'll see. <laughs> okay, so the work in progress I was talking about that's like super close to being finished, but I didn't quite get there, is a sweater. So Yeah. <laughs> All I need to do is the three needle bind off at the top and cut open the steak in the sleeves and sew up the bottom of the sleeves. That's it. And weave in ends. <laughs> so the yarn that I'm using is, go figure, Lion Brand Mandala. <laughs> I've got two skeins and just like the baby blanket I'm striping this self striping yarn so every other round the more in the round is uh, switching colors uh, the beginning of round is over here just try to get this up on the camera And what's really cool is that the way I've pulled the yarn and stuff is it, it looks like there's no jog. It's just, it looks like a continuous round almost, which is 
Surprising, I didn't even realize that I was doing that until I got a ways up the sweater. Uh, and I'm really enjoying that. Uh, but yeah, every other round I'm switching colors. So it's knit from the bottom up. This pattern is called Daybreak Tea. On, uh, I got it off of Ravelry. It's free. Posted on her blog. It's free. Uh, if you want to download the PDF without ads, then it costs money. So I'm just using um, the free post on her blog to follow along with the pattern. So it's knit from the bottom up. The way the pattern is written, you knit the f uh, when you get to the sleeve, you separate. You knit the front and the back separate. It also has lace detail. I decided to skip the lace detail um, with the striping yarn and stuff. I thought it'd be too much, so I skipped it. Um, so that's my first modification is I'm not doing the lace. My second modification is that um, I really wanted to maintain the stripes all the way around because if I knit just the front and then the back, the stripe sequence is going to be different. So what I'm doing is sticking the sleeves so that I can continue to work in the round for this top portion. I've never done steaks before, so this is my first time and I'm really excited. It is acrylic yarn, so it's not a sticky yarn. So I am going to put this under the sewing machine. Uh, but I have my steak here for the sleeve. Now I did watch a video by Knitting Expat, which I found super helpful about steaking, and I will link that down below. Um, most of the sticking videos I found were featuring the cutting of a steak, which is great to watch. I mean, those videos are super useful for sure, but there is setup that goes with steaking. Um, you are adding stitches, so having information about adding those stitches is really useful. And I feel like uh, the Knitting Expat did a great job in her video because she also talks about what if you're steaking but you're not doing color work, stranded color work in particular. And so I found that super helpful because I'm not doing stranded color work in this sweater. So again, that will be linked down below for you to watch as well because I thought it was a great resource. So I got information about adding stitches and how to handle it if you're not doing stranded color work and so I will be finishing this today or tomorrow I would imagine because I'm very excited and almost done <laughs> uh, but yeah so three needle bind off is what I need to do at the top here steak the sleeves like cut them and I do have to sew up the bottom here I guess I'll have to sew up the top here too. And then, uh, then it'll be finished and I can wear it and take FL pictures. So, yay! I'm excited. So, that's my major whip that I didn't quite finish this month. I did start it pretty late. I think I've only been working on that a week. So, gung ho on that one. And then my other whip is a headband. This is going to be a gift. Um, so this is my crisscross headband pattern, which is free on Ravelry. So I've made it um, to the part where I need to start the crisscross. Uh, so this is nine inches, and I need to pull in a second needle, split these two, uh, split the stitches in half, so have the first half on one needle, second half on another needle, get them separate, do the crisscross, and then continue on. So um, yeah, this is some Knit Picks stroll um, left over from my So Faded Sweater project. So yeah, it'll be a nice headband for a uh, family member. Yeah, I gotta finish this. It's like halfway done. And I think
think that's it for whips. So um, I set out some goals for myself for this month. One of them was to knit more pumpkins. I didn't knit any more pumpkins. So I failed that goal. Oh well. <laughs> um, I mentioned a goal earlier. And I've already forgotten what it was. <laughs> I achieved that goal. So 50%, not great, but I'll take it. I don't care. One out of two is not bad. So yeah, I uh, this month for goals, I would like to finish uh, washing the rest of the Carrie Hill fiber because I think I've probably got two more batches and a batch is just what I can fit in the um, container I'm using in the sink to wash um, so I'll put enough fiber in that container where the water can still move around and try to pull all that dirt out um, so I think I've got maybe two more batches to get through and that'll finish off the whole thing so I'd like to finish that whole washing process get that fiber out of the dining room <laughs> back into the craft room because um, we're gonna have guests at the house here soon so I need to get that back in here clean up that area uh, and then I want to finish that sweater my daybreak tee uh, and wear it and I think it's really it for goals I, I'm kind of open to oh I need to knit uh, get some more Christmas gifts done. Yep, like the headband and maybe another note. Yep, so keep rolling with the Christmas gift knitting for sure. Uh, yeah, so that wraps up the crafty content. <laughs> so just a quick update on life. Um, I mentioned the single-use plastic bag ban in Washington State so that's a thing uh, we've also had a bunch of changes around COVID protocols um, and by changes mostly things reverting back to we all got to wear masks in the store again um, and uh, state employees uh, are required to get vaccinated. Students at our college are required to get vaccinated. Uh, in case you don't know, I am a college professor here in Washington State. And so we've had to go through a lot of uh, paperwork around vaccinations and things. Uh, but last, this week, it's the end of the week, uh, but this was our first week back to school for the fall. And I actually got to go back to campus so I'm teaching uh, in person some days of the week so I'm not fully back all five days um, doing more of a hybrid schedule with some days in the classroom and some days online so it's uh, really exciting to see folks in person again um, and just kind of reduce those technology barriers um, that's one thing I'm all about is that uh, yeah telling someone how to log into zoom but the way you tell them is through zoom <laughs> yeah so, <laughs> so uh, yeah it's been really nice so far um, like I said we all have to wear masks and uh, so I'll probably be making more masks in the future uh, for us to wear because we'll be wearing them for the unforeseeable future. I don't, I don't know when that will change. Uh, I'm sure it will at some point, <laughs> but I don't know if that's going to be in this, in this school year. So uh, I'll make more masks. But yeah. I think that's it. Uh, we're getting into the fall weather. 
we are, we're getting rain again, that misty weather rolling in. It's looking more like the Pacific Northwest and less like Texas weather. <laughs> um, my yard is green again. It was brown and crispy because it was hot. There was no rain. There have been forest fires all over the place. Uh, and we've actually been getting some rainy weather back. So uh, it's a good thing. Uh, our area really needed it and everything's perking up again, which is really nice. Okay, don't forget the giveaway, Alicia. <laughs> All right, so last month I gave away a project bag and congratulations to the winner. We had a video about that halfway through the month. Uh, so we're going to do the same thing this month, but this time it's going to be a bigger bag. So this time... Let's give away a sweater size bag. Uh, so it's sweater weather where I am. So we're gonna go with a sweater size bag and it is Thanksgiving themed. Uh, yep. <laughs> so we've got Thanksgiving themed fabric here with some plaid. And on the inside we have polka dots and a pocket <laughs> uh, yeah so I have a pocket in here it's clear vinyl there we go All right so come on so you can see through the pocket uh, but yes I love my sweater bags they're so big and easy to carry around. We've got a handle here on the side, zipper closure. It is a boxed bottom, so it will open up. Um, yep. So I'm going to give away this bag and here's what you have to do to win it. So in order to win the giveaway, you need to be a subscriber of the channel. It's real quick and easy. You just click the subscribe button and then you're eligible to win. This is also open to anyone in the world. So this is not limited to the United States where I am. Uh, you could be anywhere. So feel free to join in. All you have to do other than those things, be a human on the world and subscribe to this channel uh, is tell me down below in the comments oh, what are your October traditions if you have any uh, so this could be holiday related or not but traditions that you have in the month of October and if you don't have any that's cool too that counts as a comment. Uh, so I'll share with you one of my October traditions that I've been doing for the past handful of years is watching Halloween movies throughout the month. <laughs> or maybe not Halloween specific, but sort of spookier movies. Um, Harry Potter, Halloween Town, uh, Hocus Pocus, Beetlejuice um, are some of my favorites and I swap some out from year to year um, watching so that's one of my October traditions is I like to watch a lot of fall Halloween spooky witch wizard related movies <laughs> Yeah, so uh, let's leave this open for two weeks again. So October 15th is when this giveaway will close. So you have from now, October 1st through October 15th. And then I will randomly select uh, a comment down below and that person will win the bag. And I will announce that right here on the channel so you don't have to go anywhere else. So thanks everyone for watching. I look forward to hearing what your October traditions are. And I will see you again at the end of the month, if not sooner. <laughs>